breaking news this hour. New details out of London on what appears to be a shocking case of domestic slavery. Police say three women have been rescued from a home in South London where it appears they were held captive for more than three decades. Investigators say we have never seen anything of this magnitude before. Let's get more out of London. Max Foster joins us now from the British capital. Uh, Max, what have you been able to learn from police? I've been speaking to the uh, detective in charge of this investigation. They only arrested uh, the two people uh, involved in this this morning. Uh, but in October, they actually released the three women that were held captive. Uh, no sexual motive here. They're not investigating that. They're looking purely at slave labor. Uh, one of the women was 30 years old. They were captive for 30 years. So this woman was a baby when she went in. Here's my interview with the detective. Well, at this time, we're, we're very early in the investigation. We're not investigating offences of a sexual nature. There haven't been any arrests of a sexual nature, so that's the circumstances. Slave labour you're looking at? Absolutely, yes. Um, and in terms of the 30-year-olds, is there any sense of the relationship to the other people in the house? At the moment, we don't know what the relationships are between these people. We're working with professionals who are uh, qualified to work with people in these circumstances, so we're being guided by them and establishing the facts at that pace. The charity says the two people you've arrested are the heads of the family, which implies there are other people in the house. Um, at this time, we've only got three people that are, uh, we believe, are victims. Those people are now in a safe environment, and we have arrested two people for that offence. You're experienced in this area, but can you put it into context for us in terms of your work? Well, we have dealt with cases where people have been held in servitude or forced labour for up to 10 years. But we've never seen anything of this magnitude where people have been held for up to 30 years or more. Can you tell us a bit more about how you managed to um, gain the trust of these women in the house and got them out of the house? Well, as I said, it was by careful negotiations um, using the services of the Freedom Charity, who have been uh, extraordinary in these circumstances. Um, and between that, we were able to organise their release where they were able to leave the premises and then we were able to uh, further release a further person, another person. Um, by, by, by working in partnership together, we have had this outcome where we have actually rescued three individuals. And can you give us a sense of the area of the house? Um, other than it's Lambeth, South London, that's as far as I can tell you at the moment. Um, a lot of people will be shocked by the fact that this can happen on an ordinary street. What would you say to those, those people? Well, the cases of human trafficking and slavery that we deal with, there's cases where we've dealt with cases involving children, and they do happen in normal streets. They do happen next door to where somebody lives. So I think that's the reality, that these crimes do happen across London, across the UK, and as we know, globally. In the centre of a international capital, it's, it's, it's hard to believe. Well, it's something that uh, has been reported on before and they're cases that we are proactively pursuing um, and that's why the Metropolitan Police has got a dedicated human traffic. One last question. They were released um, in October. The couple, the two people were arrested today. Can you explain the gap? Well, we've had to work very carefully with these victims. We've had to have professional advice on that and it's taken us some time to actually piece together the counts and the events. It would be wrong of us to move at a pace where we would further traumatise any victims. But when might we get another update, do you think? I don't know when that will be. People very much waiting for those updates. Uh, obviously, John, because this is a really, really shocking case. There's a huge amount of media are gathering here, trying to get what information they can. The police giving us what information they can. But there are so many questions here. Uh, what happened? Were there other people in the house as well? Charity talking about these two people arrested, being the head of the family. What does that mean? And uh, how did this come to happen? How did the authorities not become aware of these three people living in this house who seem to have some freedom, interestingly? We're allowed to come and go. We're allowed to make these calls to the charity. So there's going to be lots of questions to be answered, and uh, I'm sure more will be revealed in the next few hours, John. Now, in that interview, uh, you alluded to this, and, and he alluded to it, but we do not know enough about the chronology to know the details of the kidnapping or captivity of the 30-year-old victim, the British victim, whose age suggests she was either taken into that house shortly after she was born, or she was born in the house itself. 
Exactly. All they would say is that she has clearly had a life of servitude. Uh, they're saying that the three women uh, weren't related. That's all the information we have at this point. So it is a mystery, but clearly um, all three of these women are going to be absolutely traumatised. But for that 30-year-old to come out of that house, that environment, she's going to be extremely traumatised as well. They're being kept in a safe place. That's all we're told about them. But very traumatised. Uh, no sort of sexual moment, uh, motive as far as we know. Pure slave labour. It's an extraordinary tale. Uh, traumatized probably doesn't begin to describe their psychological state. The other thing that emerges that is so startling is that there was no uh, dramatic police raid or rescue. The police actually had to talk to these women, negotiate with them to get the women to leave the place where they had been imprisoned. Well, actually, um, the police are giving most of the credit to the charity here because what happened was there was a, there was a UK TV documentary about enforced marriage. Uh, one of the women, we believe the Irish lady, watched that documentary, saw the charity, was prompted to ring the charity. The charity uh, very smartly recognised that this was a real case and they started negotiating with this lady, gaining her trust. Uh, arranging times for them to speak, also speaking to the other women in the house as well. So they gained the trust and they worked with the police in order to allow a safe exit. But imagine the amount of work that must have gone into convincing these three women that it was safe to leave. It's an extraordinary story, a charity working very closely with the police. It seems like a success story so far, but we don't know the full details as yet and we need to know more about the alleged perpetrators here as well. They were only arrested today, so the questioning's only just started. One last question about the women themselves. Uh, traumatized is the adjective that comes up over and over again. Is there any word about their physical state or now that they are free in some sense, how free they are or whether they are once again finding themselves confined, uh, if only to protect them from the press and the public? Yeah, they're not telling us where they are. They're saying they're in a, in a safe place. Uh, I, I, um, the normal form, as you know, John, is uh, when people come out of captivity to take them somewhere where they can um, get used to their environment again and not introducing uh, too much change to that environment. So they'll be in one place with experienced counsellors and psychologists. Uh, the police have spoken to them, obviously, but this is really about uh, allowing them to come to terms with what's happened and also to, to deliver uh, the right amount of information really to help the police but without causing uh, more trauma to their um, obviously very fragile psychological state. Max Foster live for us at New Scotland Yard once again if you're just joining us details beginning to emerge about three women held captive as domestic slaves in what appears to be a very ordinary neighborhood of South London freed by police after long and difficult negotiations, the three women are said to be traumatized but safe. A couple is being held in connection with the case and the police are, are guarded in what they're telling us.